Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of the Arduino drum tutorial. Um, I decided I'm going to make it into 3 parts now, because I don't have my parts as of yet that I ordered, they're not here yet. So, this part 2 is going to still explain how to build it, I'm just not going to be showing exactly how I glue stuff together and everything. I'll, I'll show how it happens, but I won't be doing it on camera. There are two ways to put this project together. The way I did it and that you've seen in previous videos is the Octopad. This does not allow you to make the pads pressure sensitive. Because they pack so closely, one pad, if you hit it hard enough, will trigger the other one. So the way that it works in the code, if you want it pressure sensitive, then your threshold value is the minimum amount to come from these pads to trigger them is going to be very low so that you can get a high range of velocity but if you make it low then if you hit this pad hard then this pad is going to be triggered that's why this setup can't have velocity sensitivity but if you make a standing drum kit then you can separate the pads and then you can have them velocity sensitive then the other variation comes in with the actual pad because in this setup with the octopad, you have, well, I have foam on the bottom, a metal plate, the piezo and its resistor on there. It's all explained in the previous video, the one mega ohm resistor. That's all fit to the bottom of this metal plate. That metal plate is glued to the foam, and that foam glued inside the box, here's one pad, it's glued inside the box with a rubber, any kind of hard rubber you can find as a hitting surface. So that's how the octopad is put together, but if you want to build a big drum kit and have it pressure sensitive, this piezo still needs to be put onto a plate, but there needs to be a foam barrier between your hitting surface and the plate. Because if you just have the piezo on the plate and you're hitting it and you're hitting the rubber onto the plate, you're always going to get a much higher value and not as sensitive values. So that's the one discrepancy between velocity and non velocity sensitive. So, firstly, we're going to have our piezo set up, and this will just consists, these are your pads. So this will be one, one pad. So you have your piezo on the one end, you will have your wire soldered to the center, let me get a focus, to the center of the disc and the outside ring of the disc. The other side will just be kept clean. Your wires are then connected to a one mega ohm resistor in parallel. So you have your two wires running and the resistor is just soldered in parallel. Now these two wire connections, one wire connection goes to ground and the other wire connection goes to one of your analog input pins. So here on my board, as I showed, all of those one mega ohm resistors there are in parallel with all of my pads from the octopad that you've seen in the previous video. For each of them, one line is running to ground, which are all connected to the white wire, and the rest of them all have their own separate wires, which are running to the Arduino. So if we take a look here, this is the shield I made, but you don't have to worry about that. The white wire is running to ground, if this can focus. You can see there the white wire is running to ground, and the rest of them will run from A0 to however many pads that you have. Now the pads themselves will consist of a foam layer that cushions the pad, a metal sheet, any kind of metal sheet, it's not very thick, I hope that's visible. So this piezo sensor, this flat side, will be glued to the bottom of this plate. And once that's glued, it will then be turned around and it will be glued to the foam. So you'll have a sandwich like that 
with the piezo underneath. That then in turn gets any kind of rubber pad that you can find to put on top of this metal sheet. And that's the surface that you're going to be playing on. I'm going to head over to the computer now to show how the Arduino connects to the computer and all the various music softwares. Okay, so I'm here on the computer. I'm going to show you how everything connects. The first tutorial video contained all the software that you need. So I'm not going to go through how to install everything and all of that. That's in the first tutorial. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to set everything up. So firstly, if I open the file I gave you guys, that was the Arduino sketch. I'm going to show you guys how to upload that. Okay, so here's the code that I gave you guys for last time that was in the video description. So all you do is you click on tools. Once your Arduino is plugged in, you click on port. There should be COM4, COM5, any COM port. Click on that. Go to tools again. Make sure you select your proper Arduino, whichever one that you have. I have the Mega, so I click on Mega. Tools again. The Mega 2560. Once that's done, you just click Upload. Don't worry about some errors down here. And there it's done uploading. So that's the Arduino sketch uploaded to your Arduino. We can go and close that. Now you should have Loop MIDI installed, so we launch Loop MIDI. And you'll see from the first tutorial cable one is still created there. This you don't have to keep open, this you can close because it'll still be open in your taskbar here. Next thing we got to open is hairless MIDI serial, which was also given in the previous tutorial. Once that's open, you'll see serial port here. You'll also see the same COM port that you uploaded the sketch to. You select that. You must remember to set in preferences the board rate here to the same one that's in the sketch. Close and open it just to be safe. And you'll see cable one is selected here as well. This you minimize. Now the program I'm using is Addictive Drums 2. So you go, you'll see audio and MIDI setup, top left, you click on that. There'll be your speakers output and all of that. If you test it, you'll hear that noise. But you'll see here, active MIDI inputs, cable one. That's the cable that's been set up in loop MIDI over here. So if we select cable one, and your piezos that are plugged into your Arduino now should work if I tap them. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope that this video answers some questions that people have been asking, and I know it took quite a while to come out. I was just trying to manage life as everyone is. But anyways, at least I got this one out now, and I hope it helps people with projects that they were busy with and struggling with. And if there are any questions, I will try and look at them. I am still very busy, but I want to help anyone that I can. So once again, I hope that this helped anyone that had questions and I hope it clarifies them some things. I will try and do that part three as soon as I can. I still do not have any of the parts because they are just taking forever to come. And I am quite busy with university at the moment, but I will try and do that as soon as I can. And I hope to see you guys in that video. Take care.